Well, despite these hacks, the U.S. and Russia are cooperating on Syria. Today, the ceasefire worked out by both gave us a rare look at the remains of Aleppo, Syria's largest city. With no bombs falling for a second day, children ventured into the street. But 275,000 residents are in dire need of food and medicine. Elizabeth Palmer is there. Here's the sound of a ceasefire working. For the second evening in a row, Aleppo was largely quiet. And monitors confirm they've recorded no deaths anywhere in Syria in the past 48 hours. What a contrast to last week, when Russian and Syrian planes were dropping bombs on rebel-held Aleppo. We drove into the government side of the city today through suburbs shattered by fighting and heard the occasional rumble of artillery in the distance. This ceasefire is not perfect, but it is good enough that we found repair crews already out on the job tackling the huge task of restoring power. And on both sides of this divided city, the playgrounds were full of kids just being kids. The Turkish government sent a couple of aid trucks a short distance into Syria. But there's been nothing like this where it's most needed in rebel-held Aleppo, where there were demonstrations today. Opposition fighters and some local people making the point that they don't want aid handouts, they want the siege of their neighborhoods lifted. The United Nations does have the first aid convoys all ready to roll, Scott, and there is now a plan in the works supported by the U.S. and Russia to have all the armed parties, including the Syrian army, pull back from the main highway into Aleppo to let the trucks through. Our Elizabeth Palmer with rare reporting from Aleppo. Thanks, Liz.